Now let's assume that you got these production wells with these production flow periods and one PBU. So what you can do is to plot the delta P, which is this delta P signal here. So pressure T during the PBU minus pressure chatting. So you can plot this delta P in blue and its derivative in red, or the derivative of PBU pressure is the same, with respect to the superposition time. Okay, So you will end up with the delta P plot and derivative plot. And this is plot in the log log scale. Okay, And this is called the log log plot or the derivative plot. And you plot these two versus delta T here, which is the shutting duration in your PBU. Yeah. And as we said in a previous slide, so a stabilization on the derivative could be indicative of radio flow regime in the horizontal plane. So circular flow towards the wall in the horizontal plane. And the level of this stabilization is inversely proportional to k over mu. k being the permeability, h the net thickness, and mu the viscosity. So lower stabilization we mean a higher mobility, we mean a higher cage over mu, and in most of the case, a higher cage, permeability thickness. A higher stabilization, we mean a lower mobility and a lower cage. This is the first golden rule, or the first golden statement, if you like, on the derivative plot. A second statement is that the vertical separation between the two plots is indicative of the skin. So larger separation, if you got, let's say, a delta P plot, which does something like this. Okay, so this larger vertical separation here, we mean a larger skin. So that's for the second statement. The third statement is that delta T, or the shutting duration, could be replaced by the radius from the wall. So as delta T increase, you are increasing the distance from the wall. Any features on the derivative at early times, so at small delta t, that will happen near the wall bore. As delta t increases, you are increasing the distance from the wall, and at large delta t, any features that you've got on the derivative will be happening at large distance from the wall. So what you might expect to see, let's say, for example, are boundaries, and these boundaries are represented by an increase in the derivative at late times. So small delta t, you are near the wall bore, large delta t, you are looking further away in the reservoir. Okay, so let's assume now we've got second PBU and we plot the data from these two PBUs on the log log plot, or on the derivative plot. And this is what we call a derivative overlay. So in pink, here we've got the derivative from the first PBU, and in dark blue we've got the derivative for the second PBU. Now we can see that these two PBUs are not consistent, they are not tracking each other. In fact, it seems that the dark blue response is shift upwards. You see a sort of parallel shift between the two. And in this case, what we have here is we underestimated the rate. So don't forget that we plot the rate normalized pressure. So if you look at the units, this is PSI per barrels, stock tank barrels per day. So we are plotting this delta P here, go, divided by Q, right? So if we underestimate the rate here, Q is underestimate, this term is overestimated. What we will end up is a shift upwards in the response, okay? This term is overestimated. So it's important to measure the rate accurately with a production flow test, measuring the rate via a test separator or an MPFM before each PBU. So we should have a rate measurement at this point and at this point as well. So let's assume now this rate is here. So we overestimate the rate if you like. So if we overestimate the rate, this term will be underestimated. And what you'll expect to see is as well inconsistency in the derivative and the blue response, so this PBU, will be shift downwards. So you can use the derivative overlay to QC the rate data. Okay, what you should expect to see with the right rate is consistency. And if you see a sort of shift in the derivative response, probably you might have some issue with the rate data. 
There are other factors that complicate the data analysis, and we've got a well test session on this that you can have a look at. So if you've got the right rate, now what you're going to see is consistency in the derivative response. The two derivatives share the same stabilization indicative of cage over mu, and that's dictated by the reservoir properties. So by doing a derivative overlay, that brings confidence in the data, and it's easier to identify the different flow regimes. So in this case now, you've got consistency in the derivative, you selected your radial flow regime that gives you a cage, you got the total skin as well here with the vertical separation. There you go, that's ST. And now you can see that just by looking at this derivative overlay, you can see that the um, vertical separation between the two plots changes. For the second PBU in dark blue, you've got the higher separation. So that means that you've got a higher skin. It means that the skin is increasing between these two PBUs. So that was to show you very simply that by doing a derivative overlay, without doing any analysis, just by looking at the plot, you can quickly monitor the well performance and diagnose production problem. So let's assume now we keep producing at an even higher drawdown and we've got a higher rate. So we try to maximize the short-term production, which in general is not a great thing to do. So here we plot in the log plot or the derivative plot the response from these two first PBU. And we've got consistency. So now we can have a look at this PBU here. And this is the PBU in red. So what we see now is the derivative is no longer consistent. This derivative is shift upwards early time. So you see a higher derivative early time. And then it seems as you increase delta t or as you're looking further away in the wall, it seems that it came back to the original derivative response. Okay, so when you look at this red response here, you could assume that at near the world wall, at early delta t, or small delta t, you've got a decrease in mobility, or decrease in KH, and further away from the wall, large delta t, now you come back to original state. So what you have is near the world wall, you've got the zone now at the lower KH, and then what you have further away from the wall. This is very consistent with a gas breakout. So near the well bore now, you've got a multiphase region with lower permeability effective to oil as you've got presence of gas. You might not notice this gas at your face. This, the saturation of this gas might be still lower than the, gas, the critical gas saturation, and this gas might not be moving, might be immobile. But now you see, as you keep decreasing the well flowing pressure, to try to maximize the short-term well production, you see first an increase in skin with the dark blue response here, and then you create a sort of a multiphase region around the well ball. Okay, and, and this is quite common in practice. What you tend to see as you start to produce below bubble point, you start to create some gas bubble in the perforation, and this will act as an increase in skin and later on, you will create a multiphase region, and that multiphase region will evolve further away from the well. So, by doing well test analysis, you can get some information about the saturation pressure. You know more or less when you create this multiphase region. You can support the relative permeability curves, and that can help you to detect any fluid breakout before the problem becomes irreversible, and you could act on it. Let's assume now that at the end of this third PVU, we, we did a well intervention. So we enter in the well and we perforated a new sand. We flow the well. Most importantly, we took a production flow test and then we perform a small shutting at the lower drawdown. And the post intervention response is shown in red here. What you see now is a shift downwards in uh, the derivative. Okay, we assume we've got, we did a production flow test and we're quite happy about this production flow test. So we've got less uncertainty on the rate. And so now by looking at this plot, we could assume that we gain some cage. By perforating a new layer, which was not in communication with other producing layers, we gain some cage. And we might have as well decreased slightly the skin. 
by looking at uh, the derivative of a lab and comparing these different plots without doing any analysis or by doing a very simple analysis, you can quickly spot the impact of a well intervention on the skin and the cage. Okay, so time for a recap now. So we've seen that as you flow the well and you get the measurement of the rate, you take a production flow test. So you flow the well via a test separator or with an MPFM. You perform a shutting. So now pressure increases this way and you've got a PBU test or pressure buildup test for the producer. By doing a derivative overlay, that's going to give you some confidence in the data. You can QC the rate. Just by looking at the plots without doing any analysis, you can monitor the well performance over time. It can help you if you see a performance deviation. It can help you to understand the cause of this performance deviation. With a pre and post intervention PBU, you can assess the impact of the wall walk on the skin and the cage. You can detect fluid breakout, so you can detect the gas breakout, or you can predict the water breakthrough, and you can use that as well to support the relative permeability curves.